So thank you Paul for the introduction. Um, I will focus in the next couple of minutes on the DTF 2020 extension, the GNSS scale and uh, continuity issues. Okay, here we go. Um, I give this talk on behalf of Manuela Seitz, who unfortunately cannot be here. Uh, let's first come to the IGS contribution of the DTF 2020. It's based on the Repo 3 series, which realizes an independent GNSS scale through a disclosed Galileo and GPS Block 3. Set PCO's values for all other GNSS satellites, as you know, PCO's have been estimated consistently. That means in the DTF 2020, the scale is, uh, com uh, comprises um, uh, VLPI and GNSS scale information whereby uh, GNSS provides by far the largest number uh, of uh, stations in the solution. You see here from the pie charts on the right that three quarter of the stations are GNSS stations and we introduced 90% of, uh, of the discontinuities for the uh, GNSS uh, ground network. When we have a look on the intrinsic scale time series of the Ripple 3 series here, the dominating uh, space constellation color-coded by the different GPS blocks in the Galileo information. You see from the first view that is a, it is a very stable uh, scale time series and it's improving over time, so the scattering is reduced with time. At DGFI we apply the non-tidal loading corrections at the normal equation level and this leads to a decrease of the annual amplitude from uh, 2.6 to 1 millimeter. However, the draconitic signal and its harmonics remain in this scale time series, but I have to emphasize here that the amplitude of this draconitic signal is not constant over time because it becomes smaller for uh, the newer satellites uh, coming uh, online. In the lower panel here, you see the intrinsic, uh, or you see the scale time series of the different techniques with respect to the DTF 2020. In black and in pink, you see the GNSS and VLBI contribution. Uh, which are used for the scale realization in the DTRF. In purple and green you see the SLR and the Douglas contributions which have not been used in order to, uh, to realize the scale in the DTRF. Yeah, what impacts the scale realization? From this uh, drawing you see that all the techniques uh, face a major or severe uh, background model updates um, comparing, the IT, uh, comparing the 2014 to the 2020 ITS realizations. In particular for the ITS, you see that new face center offsets for Galileo and GPS Block 3 have been provided. Um, and general models like the secular pole or the non tidal loading impact the scale realization um, in, in our solution. When we talk about the long-term stability, um, we have, first have to clarify what that means. A uh, high long-term stability means that we are able to realize the linear development of the datum parameters with a very high accuracy, a very high precision and a very high consistency over the whole time span. Uh, in terms of VLBI, we are talking here about 14 years of consistent scale information. Um, when you compare the DTRF and the ITRF translation and scale rates, uh, you see here color-coded the different uh, translation uh, components and in uh, yellow the uh, scale components, you see that all rates agree uh, between 0.02 and 0.16 mm per year, so they uh, roughly or quite well fix these famous Chigos requirements of uh, 0.1 mm per year. However, you see then when you look at the technique specific scale rates, for example, you compare the X translation scale rate of GNSS with the Doris. X translation scale rate, you see that you easily end up with 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeter per year difference between the technique. I have to emphasize here that the uh, um, scale is realized in the DTRF as a, from a combination of VLBI and GNSS and in the ITRF uh, by a combination of uh, VLBI and uh, SLR. Yeah, what is the situation on the ground? You see here uh, technique specific plots of the uh, stations sort, sorted by the length of the observation time span. You should read a plot, a plot like, this, uh, like this from bottom to top. On the bottom side you have the smallest observation time spans of these stations, whereas on the top side you have the longest time series. You see this red line which indicates 15 years of continuous data of the specific station. And you easily see that SLR and VLBI provide 
a somehow solid basis of overlapping station observation time spans which are longer than 15 years. For Doris and uh, GNSS, the situation is different. We have here a very large number of discontinuities. As I said in the first slide, 90% of all discontinuities are introduced for the uh, GNSS network. And this uh, somehow leads to a fragmentation of the GNSS and the Doris TRF uh, from the input data time series. Uh, and the, the, yet, the yellow arrow indicates the DTRF 2020 reference epoch. And you can easily see, for example, in the case of Doris that you do not have very much stations from at the very beginning, which um, somehow observed also at the very end of this time series. So we have to introduce here technique-specific conditions in order to ensure the long-term stability or to stabilize the TRF realizations. And this is done at our institute by the implementation of uh, velocity constraints. We can apply velocity constraints on two consecutive solution numbers. We can um, apply velocity constraints uh, for intra-technique collocations and the combination uh, and at the combination of the techniques. This means for Doris we roughly introduced 120 velocity conditions, whereas for GNSS we introduced more than 1,300 in order to get a stable IGS solution from 1994 to uh, 2020. Coming now to the uh, update of the ITRF, so the ITRS center decided to update uh, the 2020 realizations by extending the solution uh, by three more years of data. IGS provided this time series at the beginning or early this year, and this time series was split mainly into two parts, which differ with respect to the scale realization, the ground antenna calibrations, and the number of contributing analysis centers. So you see here, in the 2020 realization, we used the repo 3 time series of the IGS. Then we have until November 2022 the extended repo 3 time series, which has this, which is based on the same Antex file, which is using the same um, scale information and the state positions, which are estimated consistently. However, the IGS operational solution then switched to a new Antex file. And the scale is now, in this solution, uh, realized consistently to the ITRS, uh, ITRF 2020 scale. We also uh, faced the problem that new um, antenna calibrations had been incorporated, which requires that we somehow reprocess our solution in the following way. Backwards in time, we have to adopt for these new station positions. Forward in time, we have to adopt for the new scale. Uh, which is an, for sure, additional effort for the combination center at our institute. What impacts this long-term stability? On the pro side, we have very long continuous observation histories. On the negative side, we have the discontinuities in the station position time series, including velocity changes. And this is caused, or is most probably caused by two major categories of effects. First, we have the geophysical effects, which are common to all techniques. Secondly, we have technique-specific effects like instrumental changes, uh, model changes, or the processing changes. The question is now, can we avoid, change, or correct these discontinuities uh, by the different reasons? For the geophysical effects, we have to say that no, we cannot do here anything except a refined geophysical modeling, which most probably not uh, make the uh, discontinuities vanish. For the instrumental changes, in the past we can only partly correct this by uh, model changes, for example new phase center variation models. I will come back to this in the next slide. Um, in the future we can for sure avoid discontinuities by carefully change equipments at stations or reduce the changes. And for the model changes or the processing changes we can um, omit these uh, discontinuities um, when we do a reprocessing. I have to say that 60% of the discontinuities introduced in the IGS solution are caused by the instrumental changes or uh, model changes used uh, by the IGS ACs. Uh, here I show two examples of station position uh, changes due to the new uh, receiver antenna calibrations. The corrections have been made, made available by Paul. Roughly 280 stations are affected back to the year 2001, which makes it necessary to recompute the DTRF 2020. Fortunately, this correction can be applied at normal equation level. On the right-hand side, you'll see two examples, uh, Chimakum uh, in the US and Port Angeles in the US. From the upper panel, you see that when we introduce this uh, refined calibration, the discontinuity, so blue to uh, red, is vanishing completely. So we can 
kick out this discontinuity. In the lower panel, you see, unfortunately, the discontinuity is not vanishing, only the sign and the amplitude of this discontinuity um, is uh, changing a little bit. This uh, makes uh, it a lot of effort uh, which is needed at the different levels of analysis and combination to ensure the long-term stability of the ITRF. At the station or observation level, let's say, uh, one should focus on the reduced and careful uh, equipment changes. Uh, on the analysis level, homogeneous models and parameterizations should be used throughout the whole time series. A uh, constant number of ACs, so we faced problems with the varying number of ACs between the Repo 3 time series and this new IGS operational time series. And taking this into account, we would uh, ensure a long-term consistent input data uh, series. At the combination level, uh, in case of the stable data parameters, we realize technique-specific TRFs, and then we check if the technique-specific scale uh, should be accounted for an offset or a velocity. This was, for example, done for the ILS contribution in the DTF 2020, which is not taken into account in order to realize the, uh, the combined uh, uh, DTF 2020 scale. So, summing up, discontinuities in station position type series, and this is affecting all techniques, limit the long-term stability. The proportion of artificial discontinuities is very high, in particular of uh, DURUS and GNSS. Reducing the number of these discontinuities would be very important to realize this uh, GIGOS goal of 0.1 mm per year stability. When we update the XRF solutions by an extension series, which is not fully consistent with the previous one, like it is now in the case for GNSS, but also for the other techniques, partly we, have, we introduce additional discontinuities, which makes it at the same time um, necessary to partially reprocess the uh, input data series, as it is the case for the uh, D2F 2020. So the take-home message would be that the reprocessing of the full history of observation data through ACs by applying new models is necessary to ensure this long-term stability. However, I see that it is a large effort for all the entities which are involved in this reprocessing. That's why um, the B2F team suggests the following. Uh, GNSS is by far the largest effort to recompute um, an update and the computation of a new D2F is possible every roughly two to three years. If the number of GNSS stations would be limited to a, a core network, let's say, which is well globally distributed, has a long observation time spans, quality of observations is good, and the collocations are also considered. So the question is, is it worth to discuss an X2F computation every two to three years with a reduced number of GNSS stations in order, in order to have a long-term stable background network where application-specific uh, reference frames like epoch reference frames or regional reference frames can be uh, aligned to. That's all. Thank you.